Hi. Let's see. Hi guys. Um, so today we're actually gonna talk a little about um, ASC 716 and specifically chapter 13. And you'll see why we're talking about this because it's gonna lead into anchorage and design and all that stuff. So I wanted to give an intro on this because typically this is not covered in um, a typical seismic course. And a lot of times people are just so focused on building um, they feel like it's not that big of a deal to kind of skip over this. But what I do like to say is that I do know for a fact for your PE examination on the seismic portion, it would be um, chapter 13 is something that comes up and it could be something that comes up. It could be a question that comes up multiple times and you'll see why. And along with that, we'll briefly touch on 15 and kind of give an idea of what that means. So with that, this is ASC 716. Now this is kind of an old reference, but this kind of gives you an idea of um, how the different books and stuff refer to this and is in an older version that I had is that, you know, we have the IBC, which in a sense is similar to the CBC. Um, they all kind of point to ASC um, 7. 16 which is a new one which is the minimum design loads for building and other structures okay and so there are multiple chapters that talk about building design you know you'll remember this taking a base share and all that stuff but really what we're focused on is chapter 13 and i think it's really important now here's a picture what a lot of people don't understand is that in a um, in an earthquake, there are damages, and people are just always worried about their house being damaged, which is fine. But a lot of the costs and damages are actually also non-structural components. And what's so important about something like this is that, let's just say this was your classroom or this is your office, and the big one did hit. Okay, great. So you made this building, everything is standing, but how do you get to the door, right? Can you imagine other people in the same room all this falling on top of you is like, well, where's the door? And then there's a chance that the door is um, locked up because something fell on the other side. So you're kind of stuck. You're in this great, amazing building, um, but everything else, which is the non-structural, has failed. And what a lot of people don't understand is a lot of the costs related to um, damages during an earthquake is a lot of times just non-structural components. Right. If you look at a lot of videos of earthquakes and stuff, you just see everything inside just kind of fall over. So the question is, can we do something about it? Right. And so that's what we're going to be talking about is how does a code treat these things that, you know, um, where a lot of courses were focused on just building that we, we now want to focus on the non-structural stuff. OK, so here we're going to be talking about the code and references. Um, it's obviously a lot of information. Um, in here, but I want to go over some of the things. This is chapter 13, and it says um, non-structural component, right? So one of the things that you want to note is that, so how do you qualify to be in this chapter is really the question, right? So one of the things is that where the weight of the non-structural component is greater than or equal to 25% of effective mass, the structure as defined in 127.2, the component shall be classified as a non-building structure. So I think it's supposed to say the weight of structure, um, greater than equal to 24W, the structure as defined in section 12, the component shall be classified as non-structural. Okay, this supposed to be 25. Pretty much um, what this is trying to say is that if you've got um, something that is small, you come into this chapter if it's greater than you go to chapter 15. And so as we go through it, you'll start to see where it applies and all that stuff. So for the purpose of this chapter, non show, show component shall be assigned to this to the same seismic design category as a structure they occupy or to which they are attached. Okay. Importance factor. Now we have a building importance factor, but we also have a component importance factor, which is I sub P. Now, components of IP shall be taken as 1.5 if any of the following um, condition applies. So pretty much you have two um, importance factors. It's either 1.0 or 1.5. 
1.0 means your typical things. 1.5 means that it's something that um, needs to be taken extra precaution to. For example, the components to fact function as life safety, um, such as sprinkler system and egress stairways. And so what that means is that in a building, if there's an earthquake and the whole sole purpose of a fire sprinkler is to go off because there's some fire be that was caused because of the earthquake, um, uh, th th doesn't work, then it kind of kills the whole purpose. So those are considered life safety stuff. Um, so or sorry, yeah, life safety purpose. So that s something like that will be an importance factor of one point five. Toxic, highly toxic chemical, explosive substance. Again, extra care, right? So you want to give it one point five, meaning that it'll have fifty percent more um, design load than one point zero. <clears throat> um, anything that's considered risk category four components attaching risk structure four needed to be continued operation okay so if you're at a hospital right a lot of the equipments over there is required to be operational now keep in mind that one of the biggest things that why hospitals are important factor four is because if you have an earthquake and people can't get in and out of the hospital it kind of kills the purpose of having a hospital because it's not functional at that point. So those are things where it's um, given extra care for. Convey, um, you know, conveyor supports, otherwise hazardous, right? Again, you don't want hazardous stuff spilling all over the place. And also anything else that um, a jurisdiction can consider as ha hazardous. Um, so in addition to that, you know, for example, um, like an airport, they may classify other things as, you know, life safety or essential um, to the system. So if it doesn't go into category one, two, three, four, then you know it's 1.0, okay? Um, so the next portion is non structural are exempt from the requirements of this chapter. So this, this is really interesting because if a plan checker is asking you that, hey, you know what, I need you to do a chapter 13, these are exemptions that um, pretty much tell you that you don't need to do any calcs for. Uh, one of the things that maybe I should point out is component weights 20 pounds or less in the case of distributed system and 5 pounds or less. Okay, so if it's really light, we don't care about it, right? Because, I mean, 20 pounds could kill a person, but the chances of it killing a person is very little. So while you would anchor it, the code doesn't require you to go through this chapter, right? Um, there's also, you know, right here, uh, discrete mechanical electrical components. Components weigh 400 pounds or less. Uh, the center mass is located less than four feet, right? So again, it's, it's not that high. It's kind of uh, low, right? So it has a low probability of rotating over, even though it could. So there are things that are there that kind of get you out of this chapter, right? So summary, we, we talk about importance factor 1.5 here, 1.0. Exemption that says, hey, you don't have to go to chapter 13. Um, okay, so one, of, so there's, again, a lot of different small things. Um, here's probably a summary. Applicable requirements of architectural, mechanical, electrical components, right? So this tells you if it's architectural, if it's mechanical, or the support attachments. Um, which sections you would go to and take a look at things, okay? All right, so one of the things that we're going to be focusing on, and you'll see it as an example as we follow through, is that how do we determine a seismic force? And so this is a code reference. So these three equation is really kind of the baseline that defines everything for this chapter um, in terms of where the loads are coming from. So imagine this as your base shear. Okay, um, and then this is your base year, this is your base year max, and this is your base year minimum, but it is for that component. Okay, so let's go into talking about what all these mean. Okay, so A is an acceleration of the item. So let's just say we're looking at a chimney, right? And the chimney is going to kind of 
you know, move due to an earthquake, right? So if that's the case, then uh, one is, what is the expected acceleration, right? The other one is SDS, which has to do with the earthquake load. So this is where you kind of go online and um, find out what the, um, S, uh, the seismic load is based on the address. Okay. Um, this is very similar to the same R factor as a building, which is kind of your ductility reduction factor, right? Because as the material starts to deform, the period of the structure changes, deformation changes, and, and so it actually ends up taking load out of the system, kind of like a car dampening system, right? The IP is importance factor that we talked about. You know, um, algebra tells you that this actually comes on top. I don't know why they don't just put it on there. They could have just done that. And so if it's 1.5, that means that load goes up when IP is also equal to 1.5. That all happens, right? Now, this is going to be interesting to understand. And really, this is the height at which the component is mounted at. Um, and this is the total height of the building. So if you have something on the ground level, which makes it the height of zero, and this height of the building is, say, 14 feet, it doesn't really matter because zero over 14 is equal to zero, right? So then that means we cross it out, and all we have is this times one, right? So the seismic force is lower as compared to if this... Um, Z and H right here was mounted on the roof then we know that Z is equal to H means that you have 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 multiply that so you actually have 3 times more load so what what it's accounting for is the whiplash effect right like imagine you're in a car and you don't have a um, you don't have um, the seat belt that goes around like your chest and pretty much someone breaks on it. You only have it around the waist because if not, you're going to fly out and you get a whiplash, right? So pretty much what it is is just this kind of banging that you'll get as you get higher. And so the code is somewhat accounting for that in, in it. Not somewhat, but it is, right? Now, this is the maximum. So if this... This um, value goes past that, then you, you have a cap, okay? And then this is the minimum also. So um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll check this, and I'll know what the value is, and I'll check it against minimum. Um, if I'm lazy, I'll ignore this, because if I um, and over, if I'm over that one, at the end of the day, I'm designing for a higher load, so I'm okay, but you shouldn't do that. Um, your client's not going to be happy. Okay, so this is kind of a summary that we talked about. Like, this is a seismic load, right? This is spectral acceleration, short period. Um, component amplification, right? I, I say it's kind of an amplification acceleration factor, right? Um, IP is the importance factor we talked about. W is the weight of the components. R, it's component response modification factor varies from 1 to 12. Height in the structure of the point of detachment. For items below the base, which is like a basement, base, basement, uh, be, um, at or below, Z shall be taken as zero. The value Z duration not exceed 1.0, obviously. Um, H is the average roof, roof height of the structure. Average. Right? Okay. We also have over strength factor, and this is, pay attention, because this is, this is key. Okay. This is something that can come into an... Um, uh, a PE seismic exam and totally trick you because they'll say, hey, what is the anchorage load due to this seismic load, right? That's that's kind of what the thing is, is that, and we'll talk that talk about that more in a, in a later lecture. But I, I do want this, want you guys to understand that this is a big thing that a lot of people miss. And they have some kind of verbiage. Ooh, masonry, we're required by here. Standard reference shall be applied in accordance of 1243 dimensions permitted. FP, okay, so we're not going to go in that section right now. Um, but anyways, we'll, we'll talk about how this plays a role um, in, a, in a different lecture. Okay, so in summary, right, 
Um, we have a lot of earthquake damage, right? How do we make sure all these things don't fall down, right? What, what, what can we do, right? So how do we get the loads? Well, what we do is we go here and we use those formulas. The thing that we don't know is we don't, we know that we have to go to USGS to get that value, great. We know the weight of the components, right? Great. Architects should give you where the height is or you have the structure that tell you where it is. Um, I, we went to table, so what are we missing? We're missing AP, RP. Okay, so where is that? Great. Um, so this table, I think, will tell you where the APRP, general force displacement, attachment, architectural report. Okay, well, forget it. I just usually just scroll through and go find it right here. Ta -da. So table 13, 5-1, okay. Architectural components, right? We have also mechanical components, but it, it's all the same. AP, RP, omega, got it? And so let's just say we have a chimney, right? So cantilevered element, um, chimneys were laterally braced or supported by the structural frame. Um, we also have cantilever elements um, braced the structure above the center of mass. Okay, we have parapets, chimneys. It's like, okay, wait. We have parapets and chimneys here. We have parapets and chimneys here, but this cantilevered elements brace above, unbrace or brace below. So what does that mean? So if you have a chimney sticking out of a roof, right? Um, that's your roof line and that's chimney and this is where the smoke kind of comes out, right? So what ends up happening is that, um, and let's just say this is the center of mass of that chimney sticking past the roof. If we have some kind of brace here, that's braced at the center, um, let's say above the center of mass. If it's got no, so that's where we'll define whether it's one or the other. So let's see, cantilever, cantilever elements, unbraced or braced below its center of mass, right? And so what is, what is that? And then here we have um, braced um, above the center of mass, okay? So what it means is that the acceleration here is less than this, right? So we know that it's getting accelerated more because it's got more of a whiplashing effect. That's the way I look at it, right? It may not be that's the reason, but that's the way I look at it. Too bad everybody else. Now, RP is your re reduction kind of factor. I know R is not for reduction, but that's what it is mathematically in the equation. So the reduction is the same, right? Because it's the same component. Um, so really what you're trying to reduce is the acceleration. And well, think about it, this is huge, guys, right? If you get like a masonry chimney and it's not braced, then you're going to get dinged a lot. You got to design it for that much more force. And you'll see as you walk around your neighborhood and you go out, you know, with this whole COVID-19, you, you do a lot of uh, walk around the neighborhoods, start looking at chimneys. You'll start to see that some of them got retrofitted where they have braces. Okay, it's interesting. Anyways, um, and so omega, right, is, um, again, for the anchorage, which is 2. All right, so that's how you look it up. And so let's see what else we got. We got lab equipments. We got billboards. Um, we got flexible, rigid components. We'll talk about that also. Um, cabinets. Okay, permanent, you know, uh, cabinets more than 6 feet tall, including cons permanent floors. So you've got that ceilings, right? And this is the thing about ceilings, right? When we looked at that first um, photo, shoot, I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it really quick. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Damn, good. So, check it out. Suspended ceilings, right? Suspended ceiling with, uh, let's see, seismic four. Okay, check it, check it. Okay, so this is what a lot of people don't know. Okay, seismic force, right? The weight of a ceiling, WP, shall include this uh, ceiling grid. Tiles, panels, light fixtures, if it attached to clipped or laterally supported by said. Okay, this is, this is what a lot of people don't understand because usually ceiling tiles and all these things are about one PSF. <clears throat> Great. Um, our laterally supported ceiling at WP should not be taken less than four. Four PSF. Okay. So even if it's one PSF, 
Well, this part of the code tells you it's four. Okay, that's a, like a really cool trick question, right? So what that means is that right here, if the engineer was not paying attention, then maybe he said, hey, you know what? These ceiling tiles, they're really light. They're one PSF. And maybe after this photo, it became minimum four PSF. Does that all make sense? So you got to watch out with the code because they, so even though you're like, okay, yeah, it's, it's way, it's not that big, big a deal. What, what they've done is they've kind of set a lot of these limitations and you got to kind of read through it. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, one of the other things that I forgot to mention is the vertical component is 0.2 SDS. That's very similar when you take a low combination, right? 1.2, 0.2 SDS plus or minus and all that stuff. Right to have the and really what 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 it's talking about the history behind it is that when you have a building, right? Typically we're talking about acceleration in this way, but what also happens is that you also have some vertical acceleration going that way, and they they've quantified it as being like twenty percent of the dead load, and that's where that magical point two SDS comes from. Okay. Now um, so. Uh, we can also go into mechanical, and I want to show you. It's very similar, right? You know, if you got a vibration isolator below, if you got mechanical equipment, so you're doing an elevator and escalator, you know, you've got all these different values to take a look at, right? So kind of keep that in mind, right? Okay. In, so in summary, this is what it's in Chapter 13. And what I also want to talk about what's in 15 really quick is that everything that's not in chapter 12, which is your typical building, right? That's what you learned in 3610. Okay, if it doesn't fall into the guidelines of that as a building, it goes under non-building structure. Um, so we have amusement structure, monuments, silos. Um, there's a list of a lot of other stuff. They even have, and this is a, the thing, um, I haven't really studied the difference too much, but if you're doing some of these tanks, Right, for example, actually I have done it. So um, tanks, for example, they have a 13 requirement and a 15 requirement. At the end of the day, when, I, when I've taken a look at it, they, they kind of say the same thing, but um, there's more guidelines and more information in, in, in the other ch chapter, right? So um, take a look at this. Um, if, if you are there, um, these are something that goes in, um, uh, that can be in both chapters because they are isolated um, possibly from like the building and all that. Um, so, um, this kind of gives you an idea of what is in chapter 13. Um, this is the first thing that I got from Google. It's by, um, SK Ghosh. I want to give credit to him. Um, his, his presentation is the one that had this stuff. Okay. Um, and, and if you want a link, go google.com search non-structural component SK Ghosh. Um, and then this, this thing will be like the first article or something come out. Okay. Okay, so I kind of just kind of highlight and summarize that for you so that you have um, what it is. So here's an example. Okay, so this is um, taken from an old code cycle, but the intents are all the same. Um, the things that may have changed is uh, R value and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's a very valid example that you use today. Really, if anything, it's probably exactly the same as it was um, in uh, ASC 710. So... Let's go over this example, okay? So we have a three-story wood structural panel shear wall building, great. Risk category two, seismic category D, site class D, sorry. STS 1.0, right? Um, our simplified alternative structural design procedure. Okay, so sorry, that's not what I meant. This is actually the building. Okay, so maybe that's not good. Okay, here we go. Duh. Um, non-structural component. Okay, so seismic design category D, SDS, IP, and W, which is the weight of that unit, which is 10 kips, okay? Um, rigid supported by with post installed anchors and attachment per ACI 355.2. And and so um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a later chapter. And in this example, I think they have a comparison that shows one at the base and one over the height. This is kind of what we talked about before, right? So, 
And this is where it was saying is that if your unit is, uh, actually, no, that's, that's fine. So the unit is actually anchored and connected right there. So here you would have anchor bolts and anchor bolts going in, holding it so that stuff doesn't kind of move in that direction, right? Now, right here, if you think about it, this is connected to the ground, right? It's actually not connected to the building. Just keep that in mind. Um, and so when, when it goes up here, right, it actually has a different response because now it's moving with the building and all that stuff. And that's what's covered in the, um, in the format as we go through it. Okay. Design criteria. Okay. Very familiar. Right. And it says we're going to go. OK, so in, 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 in the table, it's saying that in table 13, 6 one, remember it's the O code. So table may not be the same, may be exactly the same. The values other mechanical electrical components is 1.0 and 1.5. Let's go look at the table. Other mechanicals and electrical components. Thirteen five one. Um, I, I think it's in the other um, uh, table, but I'm gonna go through this first. Interior non-structural, cantilevered. Nope. Um, exterior non-structural. Nope. Exterior elements. Nope. Veneer. Nope. Penthouses. Nope. It's not a penthouse. Ceiling cabinets. Lab access. And just or or. Ornaments, uh, signs, billboards, rigid, flexible, egress stair, ramps. Eh. Okay, so that's where we go to the other table. Here's the mechanical. And we are other mechanical electrical. AP1, RP1.5. Okay, so if that's the case, let's see... There we go. See, things haven't changed, right? I think it was, oh yeah, no, table 13.6. So that's that's correct. So still consistent. Okay, so we got that. So we're gonna look at the first one, one at the base, right? Z is equal to zero. So we put zero there. Total building height is 36. Um, we know that the unit weighs 10 kips. Um, um, we know that the AP, RP, Importance factor, SDS, load is 2.93 kips. Okay, great. Remember, we got to check it for the minimum. 0 0.3 SDS um, comes out to be 3.3 kips. Ooh, means that this does not govern. This minimum governs. So therefore, hey, see how they didn't do max also? See? They're shortcutting you like me. Anyways, well, it's kind of obvious. So therefore, for the the ground mounted one, three point three kips. Okay, so the unit that's on the roof, right? Again, let me show you a diagram. So we just did this. This right here, what we said is um, three point three kips. Okay. Same thing. Everything here is the same. It's just now that the height is different. So remember here, ground level, roof level, 8.8 .8 kips. Whoa, look at that sucker, dude. Oops, oops. Eight point eight kips, three point three kips. So same exact mechanical unit, right? But the loads are totally different. Why? Just because again, it's 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 higher, right? So the forces get amplified, right? So we talked about this. So keep this in mind because you know <clears throat> you're gonna have that mechanical the contractor, and he's gonna be like, hey, you know what? What la you know la last time with the other engineer, I had the same same unit, right? And I had like ten less anchors, and for some reason, you've got ten more anchors. It's like, what are you doing? You're not, you're not doing your job, and be like, you know, tell was like, sir, hmm, 
what you got to understand is that it's at the roof level, so it sees more seismic load, so therefore it's requiring more anchors. And you tell them, I'm not over-designing it. That's what the code says. And they'll still get mad at you. It's fine. That's what it is. That's, that's, that's how life is. Okay. All right. So here is also, um, remember, is that this equation is the max. Max says that it's 17.6. So, 8.8 max. That means we go with this one. Okay. Remember, this is the three formulas that we talked about, right? I know I'm jumping, right? The famous typical formula, maximum, minimum, right? It all revolves around this thing right here. Okay. So we, we've got the load. And so remember up to this point, a lot of times, you know, in a lot of your classes, you are always given the load here. This is how you can determine your load, right? And so keep that in mind. Um, this is how you, you get the load. Okay. Now, when we do this, um, so here's a commentary. This is really cool to kind of understand and um, take a look at the commentary. Um, so the commentary here says, Section 13.2.1 requires that the architectural, mechanical, electrical component support attachment shall comply with the section of Table 13.2.1. Um, the definition of rigid component <clears throat> is given by components rigid equipment where the period of the structure is equal um, uh, is less than or equal to 0 0.06 seconds. Okay. So how do you find the period? Well, it's um, 2 pi w uh, kg. Hmm. What what people don't realize is that if you do this, this is gravitational force, right? You do this, that becomes mass. In other words, the way I remember it is time to play Mortal Kombat at home. That's how I remember it. And that's how you should remember it. Okay. These are a lot of other stuff that's, um, you know, that's highlighted as uh, important. Okay, so I do want to talk about this. So it's, uh, so the question is really rigid component. Okay, where does that come to play? That is... Rigid component. Okay, and if it doesn't fall under rigid, then it becomes flexible component. See, cool stuff, huh? Oh man, I should have taken that out. Oops. Okay, so we're getting there, guys. Hang in there. Okay. Um. Yep. Let's go through these points. So, generally, only component support and attachment need to be designed for seismic force. This is discussed in section 341, 365, where equipment, where it can be either be flexible or rigid. We just talked about that. Come on mounted supported frames as part of the manufacturer units. Supported frame must also uh, be designed for that seismic load. So pretty much, if you have a supporting unit that also has to be designed, um, 13.2.1 allows for testing alternative analytical method, 13, uh, chapter 13 testing should be per. So if you want to test it, you can go ahead and test it, right? Um, things that would be tested is things that are need to be operational after an earthquake. There's certain ways to test it. So what they do is huge. You might say, you know what, they'll have certification of like these mechanical units that are designed to um, still be operational with an earthquake. What they do is they mount that onto uh, a table. They shake it um, per, I guess, um, they have some kind of guidelines there. And if it works, um, then it's got its certification and uh, and it goes, you can go ahead and install them in this building. Now the problem is some of these units can cost like $100,000, right? And th that's the case on one of this project where you've got all, all you have is um, all these mechanical units. Um, it's kind of like a distribution center. And so when, when you have that, it's like, you gotta, you gotta, as an engineer, letting the owner know, it's like, hey, you know what, we, we could, 
say it's going to be um, seismic certified and the code if it doesn't require it and you and the owner do require it let them know it's like well it may cost you because the units that you get may never pass so you have like 10 units that you're testing it's like okay that one doesn't pass that one you finally have one that passes like i think it's like well did you just spend a million dollars to figure out that your you know fifty thousand dollar unit um passes you know so you gotta do some economic um studies you know and let your client know that because obviously if it's required by code it's a hospital you got to do it right but don't let people push you around saying oh yeah it needs to uh, remain operational just let them know what they're gonna have to pay because plus you have to pay the company that also tests it right and then plus somebody has to ship it to that location right and if it does pass do you really want to install the one that just went through an earthquake and install in the building things you got to think about in life okay um see we talked about this right hospitals continued operation right those are things okay those architectural mechanical electrical system are part of design system per 1321 shall be qualified either with tests or calculations right so okay um i this is vibration isolator i'm just going to leave this um, for you really what it is is that it's going to use a different aprp value um see different aprp value and all that stuff and it now one of the things that I want to do talk about is that is like okay great so we we've done all that what what does it all mean okay let's just say mm, um, this is your block wall right um, CMU that's your slide one grade let's just say you have a unit that's right here. And um, let's say that they have these plates, these angles that are welded. And what you're going to be finding out is if you're going to anchor this or not. Okay. Um, oftentimes you'll also have anchors at the bottom. That's the typical condition where you would just anchor it down here and anchor it down here, right? But um, just to make this kind of a, um, a masonry question, we're going to talk about how it gets anchored here, okay? So pretty much you'll do what we, we just talked about. If you Okay, so one of the things is that if you don't know where the center of mass is, it, it talks about it somewhere. Um, usually, let's, usually center of mass is at the center, right? Great. You need to know that it is at the center. If you don't know, you have no way of finding out. The default, and it's implied in the code somewhere, it talks about it, is that it needs to be two-thirds of height. Man, I almost forgot about talking about this, right? Obviously, that's the total height. In other words, when the seismic load comes in, if you don't know the center mass, you need to apply it at two-thirds of height that way. Okay. Now, in this case, um, if it goes into there, this anchor doesn't really engage. But if the earthquake is going that way, whatever load that is, let's just say it's 4,000 pounds. And you have one anchor on this side and you have another anchor on the other side. That means each anchor is taking 2,000 pounds. Now, what we're going to talk about in the anchorage lecture, which is going to be a different lecture, is that what the code says is that, hey, you know what? If you're con connecting here, you need to have a ductile failure. Um, in other words... You're not going to have a ductile failure because your your concrete's going to fail. Um, ductile failure means that your steel is going to fail. And it's the requirements are ridiculous. At the end of the day, you're not going to get it. So what you do is you take that, multiply by omega, right? So even though your seismic load is, say, 4,000, right? And then each anchor, one anchor there, another anchor there, is taking 2,000 pounds or connection type, right? Once you actually start talking about the fasteners you got to multiply by omega <clears throat> which is 2.0 that's where that table is talking about omega in other words the anchor design even though fp is 4000 the total anchor which is you have is 4000 pounds each and you have two of them so you have to design for 8000 pounds can you imagine you do all that work and all of a sudden they tell you hey you got to double it and that's a trick a lot of people um, this is what the seismic p exam is going to be asking you to understand right and if you're designing for anchorage um for somebody or for yourself 
Um, you, you've got to know that. Okay, so it's connection to masonry and connection into concrete. Those are when you use omega, right? So I want to make sure we see where that table talks about the omega. Omega, right? And sometimes it's going to be one and a half, but a lot of times it's two across the board, right? Okay, so that concludes um, the session.